Hello. I'm going to talk in this short video about a paper my colleagues and I recently had published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. The paper focuses on a relatively unexamined process in our atmosphere, namely the stratospheric water vapor feedback. Atmospheric scientists typically divide the atmosphere into layers. The bottom seven miles or so is called the troposphere, and this is where we live. Virtually all clouds and all weather, as well as most of the mass of the atmosphere, is located here. The troposphere contains a well-known water vapor feedback. To understand this, imagine an initial surface warming due to the addition of some carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. This warms the surface and atmosphere, but warmer air holds more water, so the humidity of the troposphere therefore increases. And because water vapor is itself a greenhouse gas, this leads to additional warming of the surface. This is a very strong feedback, and it more than doubles the warming you get from carbon dioxide alone. The evidence supporting this process is overwhelming, including a strong observational validation of the process. Now, above the troposphere sits the stratosphere, which contains, among other things, the ozone layer. And it's also possible that there is a stratospheric water vapor feedback. If a warming climate causes an increase in the humidity of the stratosphere, then, because stratospheric water vapor is also a greenhouse gas, this would lead to additional warming of the climate system. To test this hypothesis, we examined observations of water vapor made by the microwave limb sounder on board NASA's Aura satellite. Monthly average anomalies over the last eight years from the tropical lower stratosphere are plotted and, as you can see, water vapor has strong year-to-year -year variability. We then used a standard statistical technique, multivariate least squares regression, to extract the various factors that control the observed variability. We find that changes in tropospheric temperature are one of the factors that control stratospheric water vapor. This confirms the existence of a stratospheric water vapor feedback, whereby a warming climate increases the stratospheric humidity, which leads to further warming. We then analyzed a chemistry climate model from NASA Goddard and found that it had a similar stratospheric water vapor feedback in it, which was encouraging. This plot shows a latitude height cross-section of the change in stratospheric water vapor over the 21st century predicted by a chemistry climate model due to the warming climate. Based on this estimate, we can use a radiative transfer model to estimate how strong this feedback is and how much additional warming it causes. From these calculations, our best estimate is that the stratospheric water vapor feedback is responsible for 5 to 10 percent of the total warming from an increase in greenhouse gases. And it's possible that it could be responsible for an even larger fraction. Now, all climate models predict increases in stratospheric water vapor over the 21st century. So climate models all have this feedback operating in them already, to some extent at least. However, this process has never been tested or quantified in the climate models, so there's no guarantee that they are simulating it accurately. Our research suggests that it is important for the climate models to get this right. Doing so may improve our predictions of future climate change. Thank you.